Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Rugby with Mark. This is the Monday show and if you haven't been here before, my name is Mark. I'm a retired Kiwi guy. Well, I was until a year ago when I started this YouTube channel and I love the game of rugby. And I'm sitting here in beautiful Cancun in Mexico where I live and it's a beautiful day out again today. Now, the reason I started this channel over a year ago was I just wanted to share my passion for the game of rugby. It's as simple as that and hoping that that would play a small role in helping the game grow across the world. So here we are. And today we're gonna to talk about Scott Razor Robertson. Yes, and we're gonna talk about his selection process in the first seven games that he's been in charge as head coach of the New Zealand All Blacks. Now I'm not here to give Razor a hard time at all. I'm just here to share my passion for the game. And as a fan and not an expert, I'm here to just to share my point of view. And I know you are as well. So make sure you drop your thoughts in the comments about this particular topic. And I'd love to read them all as I do with every video. Okay, let's get into the show. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the second test against the Springboks and taking into account the other six games that Scott Robertson has been in charge of the All Blacks. Okay, let's start off at fullback and we're going to start off with Will Jordan, of course, playing in that second test at fullback for the All Blacks against the Springboks. And uh, for me, I don't like Will Jordan at fullback. I've been saying it in all of my videos. And the reason why is you've only got to look at the statistics. The guy scored more tries than any other winger in the world versus the number of games that he's played. And uh, he's just extraordinary. What is the issue with Will Jordan when he's on the wing is that he's got to get the service from the players that are inside him and that hasn't been happening. So as we saw in the weekend, I wasn't convinced at all from Will Jordan at fullback. I don't think he had a very good game. He definitely didn't make the impact the All Blacks were looking for. And um, that's one of the things I think Razor needs to look at. So what are the options then? Well, so far since we've seen Razor in charge, we've seen Steven Perifeta, who has recently been injured and not been given another go. We've got Ruben Love in the squad, who hasn't been given an opportunity. We've seen Bowden Barrett at fullback, and we've seen Will Jordan at fullback. My opinion on the fullback position is that we should give Ruben Love a go, I think, and see how he goes. I'd like to see Steven Perifeta get another go as well, and I'd like to see Bowden Barrett stay on the bench. I think, again, with the vision of heading towards the World Cup in 2027, this is what I think Razor needs to be focused on. He needs to be building the depth in the squad to take us to 2027, and I don't see that happening at this stage. So I hope that Ruben Love gets an opportunity against Australia. I also hope that Stephen Perifeta gets an opportunity against Australia. And a lot of you call me, call me out on Stephen Perifeta because you're saying that he's just a journeyman. Well, he needs to be given an opportunity to grow into that position. And again, with the focus on the Rugby World Cup in 2027, in my opinion. Okay, moving on to the wings for the All Blacks. Caleb Clark wasn't in the team this weekend because of injury and uh, wasn't it a big hole left by him I thought he played outstanding at Alice Park and he's been playing good rugby all year long I haven't been a huge Caleb Clark fan in the past I am now becoming a Caleb Clark fan because I think he's really grown his game he's listened to the advice people are giving him on what he has to do and he's now delivering it so well done to Caleb Clark he's an absolute sure fit number 11 for me in this all black team and then on the other wing we need to put will jordan back there as far as i'm concerned the sevu reese and mark talia thing is just not working you look at other rugby players on the wing in world rugby today and these guys are just not measuring up they're not giving to this all black team what this all black team needs to go forward and that's the big difference in this team yes i know that both sevu reese and mark talia are great finishers but they're not creating the opportunities that are given to them by their inside centres and that is the next problem in this team. So for me, we'll have Caleb Clark and Will Jordan on the wings and I think that's the selection for the prime team that Razor needs to look at. Okay, moving on to the centres and again we saw Rico Ioane and Jordy Barrett for the All Blacks at Cape Town and again for me we didn't see what I was looking for in terms of penetration, creativity and opportunities. In fact, I thought Rico Ioane looked quite lost at times during that game. I thought he had a fairly bad performance overall. 
but his performances in that centre role over the last number of games have not been to the standard that we would expect. And I think we need to see Billy Proctor in there at number 13 for the All Blacks. I think he's an exciting opportunity, again, building to the future, looking at the Rugby World Cup in 2027. This is what Razor needs to have in his head, as far as I'm concerned. It's all about building the squad. Look at what Rassi's doing. He wants to have 50 players ready to go at that Rugby World Cup. New Zealand's a long way away from having that depth of squad at the moment, simply because they're not giving players the opportunity. And I want to see players given the opportunity. Let me know what you think about that. So Billy Proctor in at 13. Number 12, Jordy Barrett's had a couple of good games, but he's still not living up to the expectation as far as I'm concerned. Those kicks that he's been taking for touch, he's only been making 25 or 30 metres. He's got a huge boot on him and he needs to take more risks to get us down the field. 50 or 60 metres, that's what the potential of his kicking is. And we're not seeing that at the moment from Geordie Barrett. He's done a few good things at number 12, but I think we really need to look at new solutions going forward again with 2027 in mind. And maybe we start off Anton Leonard Barrett in that position. So for me, the centres would be Anton Leonard Brown at 12, Billy Proctor at 13, and see how those two combinations go for the series against Australia. Moving into number 10, and if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I'm not happy with Damien McKenzie as the starting number 10 for New Zealand. If he's going to be in this team, he needs to come off the bench and make the impact there in the last 20 or so minutes of a game. But for me, his general management has been called out a number of times throughout this uh, series of games since Razor Robertson has been in charge. And I just don't think Damian McKenzie is the answer at number 10. So then you all ask me, okay, who would you put in there? Well, again, thinking outside the box and looking towards 2027, I would bring in someone like Harry Plummer, give him a go, see what he's like against Australia. I think he's kind of the Andre Pollard of solution for the All Blacks. He's steady, he's sure, he's going to get those kicks at goal, which New Zealand have been needing lately because they've been losing games because they've been missing penalties. So I think Harry Plummer can do a better job at that. He's going to give you the same consistency over and over again. If that's to distribute the ball out to the back line in an effective way when he's under pressure, then so be it because Damian McKenzie's going backwards at times and we can't afford that to happen. The other solution I'd look at, and again, this is thinking outside of the box, looking towards 2027, is putting Ruben Love in there at number 10 and seeing how he goes. He's actually stated that he wants to end up playing at number 10. Razor's aware of that. He thinks it's a good idea as well, but he hasn't been given an opportunity either at fullback or at number 10. So how about giving Ruben Love a go at number 10 for a couple of games and seeing how he handles the pressure of that? Who knows? Might turn out to be exactly a masterstroke. And then moving into number nine, well, I've spoken throughout the series that uh, TJ Perinara for me is not the starting nine for the All Blacks. I think Cordes Radama had a good game in the second test. I think he's going to build into that position. I think we've seen enough from him now, particularly under the might of the Springboks at Cape Town, that he's got something to offer this All Black team from a starting position. I've talked about Ratama coming off the bench. I don't think that's the position for him. He's not an impact player in that way. He needs to be able to build in the game from the start of the game. And that's what we saw in Cape Town. So I would stick with Cortez Ratama, build that confidence that he has, and whoever you have at number 10 to build that combination together. I think that's important going forward. So would I leave TJ Perinara off on the bench? No, I wouldn't. I think it's time to call a day on TJ Perinara All Black career and bring Noah Hotham in and start building him up as the second number nine at this stage until Cam Roygaard comes back. And I think that's the way that I would be moving forward with this All Black team. With Roygaard out at the moment and by bringing Hotham in, you give him a few games to get the pressure under his belt and to build into that um, team with a bit of confidence and then we end up with three world-class halfbacks in Ratama, in uh, Cam Roygaard and Noah Hotham. So that's the way I'd like to see the All Blacks move forward with the halfback position. So there you go, there's my thoughts around the backs and what we've seen so far, particularly in that last test match against the Springboks in Cape Town. Now let's move on to the forwards and talk about them. Starting off at number eight, and we've got Adi Savia currently in the position. I don't know about you, I don't think Adi's been playing his best rugby so far this year. 
I think he's been good in some games. He's done some really good carries. But I think taking him away from that number eight position, we could see a different mindset for Adi Savir. So I would put Adi Savir in the number seven jersey and start him off there. And the obvious candidate to move to number eight now after his performance in the weekend is, of course, Wallace Satiti. I think he had a fantastic game against the Springboks. After he got a few nerves out of his system early on in the game, he really started to take the game under his wing, had some brilliant runs. He was very good at tackling as well. And uh, for his debut against the Springboks, I think this was an outstanding performance by Wallace Satiti. But let's play him in the right position. And that position for me is number eight. So if we're going to move Adi Savia to seven, then who have we got in number six? And I think I'd go with Ethan Blackadder, this one. Again, looking forward to 2027, building that depth of that top team for the All Blacks. And I really liked what I saw from Blackadder at Alice Park in Johannesburg. He played a very good game. He made an enormous amount of tackles. He was great in the breakdown. And despite the breakdown being one of the All Blacks' strong points in the game in Cape Town, I think having Blackadder in there again would have made a huge difference. At this stage of his career, I'd be using Sam Kane off the bench. I think his leadership, his experience in that last 20 minutes for the All Blacks is paramount at the moment. But of course, as we all know, he's moving on and so do the All Blacks need to move on and build towards 2027. I keep saying it because I think that's the only vision the All Blacks should have right now is bringing in the depth of the squad and giving these young players the opportunity. And talking of players that I think should be in the squad, Hoskins Satutu needs to be in this All Blacks team, I believe. If he's not doing those things currently that Razor wants him to do on and off the board, then get him into the environment where he's going to learn from the best to do that. Putting him back and leaving him in domestic rugby is not going to cut it. He needs to come into this squad and be given the opportunities to develop his game. If he doesn't do that over a series of games, then make the decision to get rid of him. But leaving a player out who's had such an impact on domestic rugby in New Zealand in the last year, I think is currently a big mistake. Now, when we've been talking about loose forwards and I'm reading all of your comments here and I've been seeing a lot of people talking about Scott Barrett going into the loose forwards, I actually didn't think this was a good idea a few months ago, but now I'm starting to enjoy the idea or the prospect of Scott Barrett going there. So yeah, I like the idea of Scott Barrett being used on the loose forward uh, trio for the All Blacks. So then we've got to talk about locks and what do we do with the locks in the All Black position at the moment? Well, we've got Patrick Tupiloto coming back in, of course, after he's been injured. And I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Tupo Vai at the moment. He's going very, very well as a young lock. And I think we need to bring in Sam Derry on a consistent basis. And we need to bring Josh Lord in. And I think we've got the answers to our locking woes there for the All Blacks. We need to give these guys time, give them the experience, and build them towards 2027. And I think at that stage, we can have some of the best locks in the world if we develop these guys that we've got in the team. So my discussion today is not about bringing in all these new people to the squad. It's about looking at who we've got already in the squad that we're not using. And we need to give them more experience against the top teams in world rugby. Whether we win or lose this year, to me, it's off the table. And I know that a lot of you are going to say, well, the All Blacks need to win. This is what the pressure is for Scott Robertson. The New Zealand Rugby Union have told him that they have to win every game. Well, it's more important for the All Blacks to win the next Rugby World Cup than it is to worry about a rugby championship this year when they've got an opportunity to bleed in some of these younger players. That's just in my humble opinion. Okay, so there's the lock sorted. Now moving into the front row, I think we've seen already enough from Tamaiti Williams to think that he is going to be the future for the All Blacks front row when we bring in Ethan De Groot again. Cody Taylor had an outstanding game in the weekend and Asafa Amua can still become a lot better in that role as well. Tyrell Lomax got into a little bit of trouble in the weekend. He was also left on the field for way too long. So the use of the bench is something else that Razor needs to get on top of with his crew because that didn't work in the weekend in my opinion. So as far as the front row goes, I think the All Blacks have got a lot of supply there. Tosi as well we need to see to come in. He's another one that a lot of you have been calling for and I agree we need to see him playing in the All Blacks. So there is a plethora of players available for New Zealand that have got a lot of talent but they're not necessarily being given the opportunity. 
And that's what I'm talking about in this video. I want to see Razor experiment a little bit more. He did in Cape Town, but for me, he put the wrong players in the wrong positions and it didn't work. What we need to see is use those players that are showing us how they're growing, how they're developing, and how they can take on responsibility. Caleb Clark is one of those players. Wallace Satiti was another one of those players. Tupo Vai is another one of those players. These young guys are stepping up and showing that they've got the ability. They just need a few games to get going. Now, a lot of talk around the bench for me, and uh, everybody's got an opinion on who should come off the bench for the All Blacks. Again, looking towards how we're going to win a Rugby World Cup final in 2027. Who are the players that you would want to bring on to win you that particular game? Well, for me at the moment, Bowden Barrett is best suited for that role. He comes on with that general leadership and experience. He can change a game when he comes off the bench, but he's also hot and cold, isn't he? Some days he's brilliant like he was against England. Other days he can come on and because of the way the rest of the game is going for the team, he doesn't have that particular impact. So that's something that we need to consider as well. As I said, from a halfback point of view, I'd like to see Noah Hotham in there to come on because giving him 20 or 30 minutes each game now would help him build that experience and bleed him into it. And of course, we've got Cam Roygaard coming back. So we're probably going to see Cortez Ratama go onto the bench. And for me, bringing on someone like a Mark Talia or a Sevu Reese is not going to do it for the All Blacks. We need to somewhat bring someone on that's going to bring on a lot of impact in the game. And then that raises the next question. Should the All Blacks go to a 6-2 split and start to win the games more by forward domination and also forward speed and execution of skill sets? That's something the All Blacks have been doing for many, many years. This year they haven't been able to nail that part of the game in my opinion. So let me know what you think. Should the All Blacks be going towards a 6-2 split? Or do you think they still should be looking for that third back to come off the bench who can be a game changer? And if that's what you believe, let me know who you think that third player is off the bench. So there you go. There's my thoughts so far around what's been happening. Looking at the second test against the Springboks as a bit of a baseline. We saw Razor take some changes, so he's got to be applauded for that. But for me, those changes didn't work out and we started to see under the real litmus test of the pressure of the Springboks that someone like Damien McKenzie hasn't been doing what the All Blacks need in that number 10 jersey. The same with Rico Iwani in the number 13. If Iwani is going to be used in this All Blacks team, maybe he is a solution off the bench, but to come on on the wing towards the end of the game, that could be an impact player we go for. Again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments around that one. So we're seven tests in to Razor Robertson's reign as the head coach of the All Blacks. Let me know what you think of his performance so far. Has he been developing this team in the way that you would like to see it go? And what do you think of the things are that he's missing? One thing I'd like to acknowledge in this video is that Razor has come into this All Black position under enormous amount of pressure. Of course, he achieved wonderful things in Super Rugby, but Super Rugby is not international test rugby. It does not have anywhere near the pressure and you're not playing against the elite best players in the game of rugby. And that's what he's up against now. And I think Razor would have come back from this tour from South Africa and learnt a lot, both from Rassi and his philosophy, but also about a lot of the players in this current squad. And it's going to be really interesting now for me as we head towards this Australian series, the Bledisloe series against Australia, what is Razor going to do? with his selections because this is going to be the last chance he's got before the All Blacks head off on their northern tour at the end of the year and we're going to have to see some really critical changes I believe for the All Blacks to keep progressing forward. So there we go that's my thoughts around the current selection process for the All Blacks. Now remember I came out of retirement last year to share my passion for rugby here on YouTube. There are five ways that you can help me support this channel. Here they are on the screen right now. Remember, the only reason I'm doing this is because I want to play a small role in trying to help the great game of rugby grow across the world. That's the only reason I'm in this YouTube game. So please do whatever you can to help me support that. I love your comments, so please put your comments down. I read every single one of them, and it's great to listen and to learn from you all about your perspectives on rugby across the world. Now, I'm going to be back again this week with plenty more content. 
Thank you for watching the video today. I really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed it, give it a bit of a thumbs up as well. And tell all your mates about this Kiwi bloke who's sitting over there in beautiful Cancun, Mexico, making videos about rugby. I'd be very appreciative of that. I'll see you all again very soon. It's now time to say adios from beautiful Cancun. And you stay safe and stay well, everyone. Until next time, bye for now.